with epidemics of disease that surged the area. Sometimes Desperado and Epidemic rode together and death triumphantly led the way. For the sake of a community, one courageous man who feared neither Desperado nor Epidemic challenged them both and the gaunt specter that rode with them. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. the road to Rising Springs. I want the sheriff in a hurry. Yeah, this is the road. What's the trouble? Huh. Hey, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. From the looks of him, the stranger had disturbing news to tell Sheriff Quinn. But the road he'd come along led directly from the Stebbins. If he'd stopped there, I had some mighty disturbing news to tell him. There you are. There you are, John. Henry? Jack, you better be. There you are, Zeke. Oh, hello, Doc. What's all excitement? A stranger here saw a man hiding out in the cedar brakes near the West Rim. He swears it was Skeeter Baldwin, the last of the Bill Cook gang. Thought I read they'd caught him down in Texas somewhere. They did, but he broke jail over a month ago. Right after that, he pulled a train robbery. Shot, killed a guard, and got away with $80,000. I recognized him right away. The railroad's got these things posted all over. We're forming a posse to go after him, Doc. You care to come along? I can wait for a second. We've met. I'm Dr. Baxter. My name's Sims, Ben Sims. I'm a traveling seed salesman. Glad to know you. I tried to talk to you, Mr. Sims. When you took that wagon trail back to the main road, did you stop by the Stebbins farm? Stebbins? <laughs> Look, Doc, I'm a stranger here. I don't know anyone, though I intend to. It's the only farm on the trail. Did you stop there? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. Why? Well, the whole Stebbins family are down with diphtheria. It's a highly contagious and very deadly disease. And by stopping there, you might have exposed yourself to it. I'll have to ask you to put yourself in my care for a few days, for observation. What kind of a filthy trick is this? You trying to deal me out of the Baldwin reward money? Sheriff. I'm not trying to beat you out of anything except the chance of your infecting and probably killing a lot of innocent people. On the medical stuff, Doc Baxter's words law around here, Sims. You'll do what he says. Now, as for the reward money, if we get Baldwin, you'll get your fair share. We're more than enough to make a posse, Sheriff. Let's get Baldwin. Right. We'll work out a plan on the way to the Cedar Breaks. You realize that by being around Sims, you might have exposed yourself to diphtheria, too. And that goes for the rest of you in here who have been near him. Are you crazy, Doc? That Baldwin's a mad dog. I'm not leaving my wife and kids unprotected while he's loose in the valley. You keep saying near, Doc. How near? Near as anyone in this room. How about someone standing at the hitch rail across the street? Would they be able to catch this bug? No. Well, then, what's all the fuss about? I didn't come within 50 feet of anyone at the Stebbins farm. Someone, I guess it was Stebbins, yelled that I was to keep my distance. And you didn't go in? No, I just asked where the nearest sheriff was and left. Did you touch anything there? No, matter of fact, uh, Stebbins yelled that someone stole a lot of their food last night. I thought maybe he suspected me and I took out fast. Well, that gives you and the others a clean bill of health. It gives me something else to worry about. Who stole the food, huh? Cedar brakes are right close to the farm. It must have been Baldwin. It means he might have diphtheria, too. Could he pass it on? Sure he could. All he'd have to do is steal some more food from another farm. All right, men, you heard the doc. We're going after Baldwin, and we're going to shoot to kill. You coming along, doc? I guess I better. If any of you kill him, don't touch his body until I've had a chance to examine it. It's equally as important to catch him as a diphtheria carrier as it is to catch him as a murderer. Ah, uh, come on, let's go. He's somewhere in 
that canyon. It was the only way out through the East Pass. Stevens, Polly, Brown, block that off. Fan out. We'll drive him toward the river. surprised when the widow Randall came along. Mrs. Randall, what in the world are you doing out here? I heard in town they'd cornered Skeeter Baldwin. Is he still alive? From the sound of all the shooting, I'd say he's still very much alive. However, I think it's just a matter of time before they get him. Oh, no. What'd you say? Nothing but... These men are already hurt, and there'll be more. Don't worry about it, Miss Randall. I don't think the sheriff will let the men take any unnecessary chances. Look, this isn't the safest place in the world. Why don't you go on back home and wait till it's all over? I'm going to stay here, Doctor, until I know. That is, couldn't I help you take care of the wounded? I'm sure the men would appreciate it. Through that way, we got him blocked off. That puts us back to the river, huh? Yeah. What are you doing here, anyway? She came out here to see what was going on and stayed around to help me. Did you get the outlaw? I'm afraid he got away. I don't understand it, either. He was wounded pretty badly. You shot him? No, we didn't. The express messenger did. When Baldwin pulled the train robbery. Anyway, the messenger said there was a trail of blood leading to a getaway horse. Maybe somebody patched him up. I'd like to go home now, Doctor, if you don't need me anymore. It's all right, Miss Randall. Thanks a lot. I'll take you home, ma'am. And don't be too concerned about Baldwin getting away. We'll get him tomorrow, sure. Tomorrow came and went, as did an entire week. And Sheriff Quinn had failed to catch Baldwin. Come in, Sheriff. Are you expecting someone this late, Doc? Mrs. Randall and her little boy, I guess they've been delayed. Any luck? No. Uh, give me a hand with these boots, will you, Doc? I haven't had them off for days. My feet are killing me. Baldwin's been running us ragged. Matter of fact, one of the reasons I dropped by was to see if you'd had any new cases of diphtheria. It'd give us a line on where to look for him. No new cases since the Davidsons early this week. Still think Baldwin passed it on to him? Sure he did. Same way he picked it up the Stebbins farm, by stealing food and drinking water out of their well. Sprinkle some of that in your sock. Thanks. But, Doc, how can he stay alive if he's got it? You said yourself that theory is a killer. It's a curious disease, Sheriff. It's 
possible to be a carrier of it and not even have it yourself. It's my guess that Baldwin's a carrier. Well, maybe we're rid of him and the diphtheria. I'm almost willing to believe he got clean away across the mountains. Be a lucky thing for Rising Springs if he has. Sheriff, I've been reading up in some of the old newspapers on that train robbery, and I see where Baldwin wrote a letter to one of them saying he was innocent. Ah, that's right, he did. You believe him? Nope. Baldwin was positively identified by the express messenger who shot him. Baldwin got $80,000 from the robbery. You remember? Well, some people might hide an outlaw, even a disease carrier, for a piece of that kind of money. A relative might do it for nothing. How's that, Doc? Oh, nothing, Sheriff. Just nothing. Oh. Well, anyway, starting tomorrow, I'm making a thorough search of every home in the valley. That... Well, that reminds me. You better have that. What for? Protection. Well, Baldwin might come here looking for medical treatment. You know how to handle it? Well, if that wasn't a silly question. I guess I'll be on the way, Doc. Looks like the widow Randall forgot her appointment, huh? I'll wait a little while for her. So long, Doc. Thanks for the foot potter. You're welcome. It was a wild idea connecting Mrs. Randall with the outlaw because of her unusual actions at the gunfight and an appointment she didn't keep. Too wild to trouble the sheriff about it, but it nagged me that night. And the next morning, for my own peace of mind, I drove to the courthouse to check the records. The town was deserted. Evidently, the sheriff had started the house-to-house -house search early. Mrs. Randall's marriage record I wanted. And when I found it, it told me all I needed to know. June 3rd, 1899. Jack Randall to Mary Baldwin. I drove up to Mrs. Randall's farmhouse with mixed feelings. In one way, I was glad I hadn't told the sheriff my idea. In another way, I was mighty worried I hadn't. Rather you didn't, Doctor. I'm afraid that I've been a little lazy this morning. The house is a mess. Oh, I don't mind a little untidiness, Miss Randall. Remember, I'm a bachelor. What do you want, Doctor? Young Zach missed his appointment yesterday. And with diphtheria around, I got a little worried. No, we're fine. I'm sorry about missing the appointment. I, I'm afraid I forgot about it. Where's Zach? Oh, he, uh, he's playing down near the pond somewhere. Will you excuse me for just a minute, Doctor? I, I'd like to clear away a few things. Skeeter, he's suspicious. You've got to get out of here. Be here. I checked back on Mrs. Randall's marriage record. Pretty smart. All right, what are you gonna do? It's taking you in. There's only one way you will, and that's dead. That's the way it might be. You got a code to live up to, haven't you, Doc? Save lives, <coughs> not take them. I don't want to kill you, Baldwin, but I will prevent the disease you're carrying from going any further. What do you mean? You're a diphtheria carrier. You picked it up at the first farm where you stole food. Diphtheria? My baby. You're a lion. I wish I were. You're a diphtheria carrier, all right. You passed it on to the Davidsons when you stole food from them. 
<laughs> and something else. I imagine you'd like to have a chance to prove you're innocent of that train robbery instead of being hunted down like a mad dog. And you think I'm innocent, huh? Whoever pulled a hold up and murdered the train guard was shot by the express messenger. If you're not carrying the slugs, you're innocent. There's a trap, isn't it? You tipped the sheriff I'd be here. No, he'd shoot you on sight. That's one reason why I came alone. Mommy, come here! No, 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 Skeeter, don't shoot him. Toss the gun on the table, Doc. My baby is sick. He needs you. Mommy! Mommy! Take care of the kid. Bring my bag. get your doctor desperately. But he said he'd kill me if I tried to leave the house. Get me some water and a spoon. You gave it to him. I need antitoxin. I'll have to go back to my office and get it. You're not leaving here. Fix him up without antitoxin. Without it, there's very little I can do. Well, then do it! He's got to have antitoxin. Without it, there's no hope. <laughs> The boy's life is at stake, Baldwin. You can pull that trigger if you want to. Wait! Stay here with the boy, Mary. I'll go. Do everything you can to keep him alive, Doc, till I get back. What do I look for and where? It's in a little bottle in my medicine cabinet, plainly marked diphtheria and a toxin. And hurry up. Mary, <coughs> crying isn't going to help. Pull yourself together. <coughs> How close a relative is he? He's my brother. I haven't seen him for years. But I couldn't turn him away when he asked for sanctuary. He's been bad, Doctor, I know. Robbing and looting with the Bill Cook gang. Breaking out of jail and now this. But he swears he's innocent of the train robbery and killing the guard. And I believe him. For your sake, I hope he is, Mrs. Randall. And that he can prove it. It'll get us up to the other side of the valley faster. Well, let's hope we have better luck over there.
His collar. Yeah, I know. Skeeter doesn't come very quick. <laughs> We've got to get his temperature down. He's here. Hurry, Skeeter. Doctor! See if you can stop the blood. tried to shoot him. Baldwin. Well, would it matter? You've got some tall explaining to do, Mrs. Randall. I can explain that. Baldwin's her brother. What? Look here. Do you see any old gunshot wounds on this man? I told you I was innocent. That's pretty conclusive evidence. Hey, Doc, you don't want to patch him up here in the living room, do you? I'd rather get him into my office if I could. All right, give me a hand. Well, what's the matter with you, man? Must be where the doc hit me. I... I think I'll go back to the hotel and get a couple of days rest. All right, you do that. For a stranger, you've already done more than your share. Just a minute, Sheriff. All you men have been exposed to diphtheria. I'll have to quarantine you to your homes for a few days. Sims, go back to your hotel room and don't leave it. And don't mingle with any of the other guests. All right, Doctor. Give me a hand, Ross. Sure, sure. Watch that shoulder now. Take it easy. Come on, Easy. Bob. On your feet, boy. Okay. Mommy, come here! Somebody's awake and calling you, Mary. Well, you look happy. I am. I just wrote cured to my last diphtheria case. Young Zach Randall. He starts back to school tomorrow. Glad to hear it. I just got the word on Baldwin. How'd he come out? Drew two extra years for breaking jail, but the court found him innocent of the train robbery. Sounds like a fair sentence. I was on my way to tell Sims. He's going to be mighty disappointed losing out on that reward money. You want to come along? Yeah, I'd like to see him. I've been wanting to see him, but he's kept his room locked. I couldn't even get in. Doc, he wanted over at the hotel quick. Sims, he's dying. You better come too, Sheriff. You're gonna be able to pull me through, Doc. We'll try, Sims. You'd only let us know a little sooner. Where are you gonna put that? Right between your shoulder blades. Turn over. No, no, put it in my arm. Has to be in my your arm, Doc. Turn over. My arm, Doc. Come on, no. Come on. No. <laughs> hey, look at this. Looks like slug wounds. They are. It's exactly the way they heal up when they haven't had medical attention. No wonder you didn't want us to look at your back. I'm not gonna make it. So I might as well tell you, Eddie. You... <laughs> that was almost a perfect crime. Everybody. Even the express messenger. Dead certain it was Baldwin. Tell a doc I'm snooping around. <sighs> You'll find a... Money in the saddlebags under the bed, Sheriff. Hi, Doc. You better get over there. Keep an eye on Sims. Sure, Sheriff. No need to go. He didn't make it. Slug wounds finally got him, huh? No, he died from myocarditis. Come again, Doc? Myocarditis. Inflammation of the muscular part of the heart wall. It's a fatal complication of diphtheria. Sims had diphtheria? Did he pick it up from Baldwin or Zach? No, he picked it up at the Stebbins farm. He told me just before he died that he lied about being there. 
Sims hid out in their barn, recuperating from his wounds. He saw Baldwin sneak in there one night to get some water from the well. Then's when he decided to come out in the open and tell us he saw Baldwin and arouse the town into killing the outlaw. You see, with Baldwin dead, this kept him in the clear. I think I'll be running along. I've got some people waiting in the office. All right, Doc, and thanks. Thanks for everything you've done. See you, Doc. You betcha. 